thank you for bringing us back to this corporate presence of yours again. Thank you for the continuous privilege of having to have uninterrupted, undisturbed corporate gathering. We give you all the glory and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. And tonight we ask you that you grant seed sowing moments, seed watering moments, and moments of divine increase, even as we dwell on the matter of your calling on our lives. We thank you. We bless your great name. Be exalted. Be lifted. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, let's be seated. Such a beautiful thing to always be gathered in the corporate presence of God as we have it today. And um, one of the things that we must bear in mind as we enjoy this kind of uninterrupted gatherings is the fact that uh, times will be coming when uh, we may not be able to gather like this corporately. Amen. And I'm saying this by the Spirit of the Lord, that um, any region, any territory that still enjoys the benefit of uninterrupted corporate meetings like this, it is very important for the Christians who have been given such a privilege to make a quick, uh, make the most of that privilege, and you have to be very quick about it. Uh, the Lord started the church the way he wanted it, and it's obvious that the church will have to return the way the Lord started it. And right from the beginning, from our inception as a living organism, persecution was a part and parcel of our definition. Once upon a time, the teeming, uh, growing, and enlarging corporate church that we have at Jerusalem at the time, uh, which afforded ministry privileges and platforms to different functionaries, a time came where that beautiful congregation was scattered, and they were scattered abroad. And it, it was what men, the fragments, the particles, the portions and the parts that these men and women who once upon a time had the privilege to gather, it was those portions and parts that scattered to wherever it was that they were dispersed. So Philip happened to, to land. He fell on Samaria, but it was a scattering moment. Do you get what I'm saying? Now the church in Nigeria and largely in Africa still in certain quarters, certain climes, still has the privilege and the opportunity to be gathered like this under uh, domesticated, organized conditions, sounds, cooling system, good chairs, and all of that. But it looks like that is not going to be uh, tenable for so long a time. The last documentary that came out about a prophet and all the things that went on, uh, many of us don't know the goal, of, the goal of Satan that was defeated by that. But I don't think that the intention and the errand behind all that happened 
I, I don't think the church has mastered and also um, sterilized that intention of darkness into a state of impotency yet. But that time is going to come where, as a minister of the gospel, you're not going to be allowed to lay hands on people. There are many things that we are able to I don't think it's going to be too long. It may not be a very general sweep, but within pockets and packets of places where they had these kind of privileges we are having today, uh, those privileges are going to be seized. They're going to be removed gradually. Church is being born, things happening, which are already going on in certain quarters. And the people and persons, the lands and climes that still have the privilege of this kind of corporate gatherings, it is important that you bring both attendance and attention to the to why you still have these privileges and opportunity uh, right before you right now. So if you don't church right, a time will come where you are not going to have this free opportunity to church. So that those who under this plane, all right, this plane, this normal government regulated environment, those who cannot run, the Jordan will be swelling not too long from now. And if in the land of the plane, uh, coming to church, praying, and all of that, you're already being wearied and worn out when the Jordan begins to overflow its bank, when it begins to swell and overflow its bank, uh, the numbers will be very few. And it is important that you take uh, your work and the time that you have right now, it is important to take it serious and make the most of it before the night comes where no man can walk. Uh, the next thing that is, I'm feeling heavy on my heart uh, is the fact that the Christian life was designed, the design of the Christian life is that it is meant to be operated by faith. Faith is the operating system of the Christian work. There are many things that the sacrifices of Jesus, the majesty of Jesus, uh, and everything about him has made acts available that faith makes it accessible. Do you get what I'm saying? For instance, the healing of our bodies, of our organs and everything uh, has been paid for by his stripes. We are healed. So legally, judicially, the healing of the believer of humanity is provided for, but there are, there are tools that, that makes them accessible. So you need to understand the difference between what is available and what is accessible. Certain things are available but not accessible, but there are other things that are available and they are also accessible. And one of such things that is available and is also accessible is healing for the believer, but the vehicle and the tools becomes uh, the challenge, faith. You have to on the go as time passes, passes, the passage of time should have you developing and building certain um, requisite tools and instruments you'll be needing for the journey. Praise the Lord. Amen. For, for the reason why I am. I felt to say this is because when I came up here, I forgot I didn't carry my glasses and I didn't want to strain myself to have, have to read. And it's like somebody was wondering why is a pastor an anointed man having to use glasses? The things that we get to deal with, the things that we get to 
have in our lives are the things that we have access by faith. Sometimes you are going through a situation for which you have not had a head up or a head start in faith construction. What I mean by that is healing is free because Jesus Christ paid for it, but the, the fork lift of faith to have that kind of healing as and at when you need it may not be in place for you at the moment. Okay? That uh, the, the other bypasses that you may have may be the bypass of medicine, all right? The bypasses of science, the bypasses of the anointing, whereas if, you, if your faith is not able to plug you to the healing port in a vital and controlling measure that you can experience an instantaneous healing in a particular area of your life at the moment, there are options, there are, there are, there are, there are anchorage that you have. Okay, so that your faith is not able to handle your health condition right now. One of the options that we have, which is also a channel of healing, is medicine. And it is advisable that if at the point, even when there is um, a robust anointing on ground, they say Benihin is on ground, Benihin has, uh, is a healing evangelist, and you are not able to maybe use the name, the reputation, the testimony, and all that shrouds that man's ministry to open your own spirit man to receive healing. If you are not able to muster all of that at the time, there are other tools you can lay your hands on, but it is also advisable that while you are using these other tools, you should be building the, the, some sensitive tools it is like a man who is a tenant. You are a, you are a tenant. You are occupying an apartment. You are paying um, annual or monthly tenancy on that property. But you also have a piece of land, and you are constructing something that is relatively more permanent per se. I don't know if you get it. That I am building my own private apartment. But currently, I am living in a rented apartment. The end product of this whole equation is that you don't get to come under the, 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 the impact and the extremities of the elements. The sun, the rain, the winds, robbery, and all of that. You don't get to be exposed to that. But while you are managing this option, you should have a system and a structure, a, a, an arrangement on ground to develop and build this one. Do you understand? It is like being a, an employee who is also putting structures in place to become an entrepreneur where you have your own business, you have your own company. And then over time, uh, what is happening in your private... I think this is for someone. That what is happening in your private company is now able to manage the demands of your life. At that point, you can let go of your paid job and then devote your time to your own company, your own business. And um, if you stay focused and you, you stay on the line, a time will come where the challenge is not going to be, the, the, the whole story is not going to be about whether this business can carry your, the demand of your own living. But you now have other persons who are working, and these persons most of the times are representatives of families. You get what I'm saying? That these are householders who are now being supported by something that you have to build. So it is with the life of faith and with particular uh, regards to experiencing certain things that God has made available. So that I can be wearing lenses to have clear vision today, but because I am speaking to my body, I'm speaking to my eyes, I'm speaking to my system, I'm using words under the anointing, declaration of faith to still reorganize, to recalibrate all of this. 
a time will come where this will not be necessary, but not only is it that this is not going to be necessary, we are going to be helping others to take off their own glasses. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, all of these are environments around the development of the call. And I say this to establish the emphasis and the burden the Lord placed in my heart today while I was praying. Um, yeah, I was praying about what the outlook and the move of God for tonight is. And what he is bringing around to my, my heart is developing sensitivities for the calling. Sensitivities for the calling. So that in a situation where you are unwell, there are many things happening there. You are not feeling as comfortable, as okay as you would have loved to be. And one of the options will be for you to become okay. The other options will be for you to become okay, then you become an ambassador. You get it? Most, I don't know if my records are accurate, or straightforward, but I'm told that the founder, the one, the, 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 there is a man who had a hand in the discovery of penicillin. And one of the things that happened that led him to that is either that he lost a son or someone close to him that he went into either sponsoring research along that line or um, pushing for discovery along the line of penicillin. So that you can go through a situation and if you are not smart and sensitive to draw greater profit from what is happening to you than what is happening to you, you can just become okay and then life goes on. But for those who become more sensitive around the things that are going on in their lives, they make a, a story out of what they are going through. So that this, this woman, she, she lost her husband and then she, she suffered deprivation and too many things. Others may end up decrying what is happening to them and they are in pain looking for sympathy. Then some other person rises up from that same ashes with a mandate to help women, people in such conditions. Now they have mastered what has happened to them. They have overcome the weight of what came to them and they now have a ministry, they have an assignment, a burden out of what looks seemingly like pain. And when we begin to become sensitive to what and why, the what's and the why's around our lives, uh, there are certain horns that begins to grow uh, and um, it's easy for God to lay hold on those things to wield certain kind of possibilities and outcomes among um, humanity. Sensitivity to the call of God. There are many things that happen in our lives. I have read the Bible. There are different ways you can read the Bible. And um, as you begin to grow, um, the, the first step is you're just going to read to get the facts and the stories of the Bible. And that is the best, that is the first point of call as far as spiritual knowledge is concerned. If you have children, uh, we don't, it, it doesn't make sense to get kids into application level of scriptures and truths if they don't have the facts and the stories and the details of scriptures. They should know that God created the world in seven days. They should know that Jonah was swallowed by the whale. They should know that after three days, the whale vomited Jonah. They should know that Jonah went to Nineveh. They should know that uh, um, Peter, uh, Peter casted a line into the water and then he brought out the fish and there was a coin in the mouth of the fish. They should know that when God called Abraham, Abraham was 70 and 5 years, he had no child and God promised him child. And all that happened, when you have those details, then a time comes where like bidding, alright? I don't want to go into how we relate with scripture from study, meditation, the rest. But when you begin to relate with scripture, you know there's a bidding process. You carry those beads with a thread. Then you begin to add them and you add certain colors, this color, put some, you know, the numbers of a particular color and all of that, and then different shape of those materials. At, but at the end of the day, you have a shape that can be worn to add down. When you look at scriptures, uh, one of the things that excites me when I contemplate the subject matter of the call is characters, persons around the anointed. 
presence of the Lord. People and persons around the anointed. I looked at the life of Elijah. And one of the, the, the individuals that the Lord himself um, ordered into the ecosystem is Elisha. So Elijah had Elisha and the sons of the prophet. But within the core of what was happening, the meat of divine working is not with the school of the prophet, not with the sons of the prophet, but with Elisha, who did not have an organized uh, official kind of entry point into the school of the prophet. Now, if you, if you, if you um, fast track, fast forward a little, then you're going to find a time where, uh, there was a time where Elijah was the man that God was working everything around. After some time, about 20 years plus, uh, Elijah was off the scene. Then the same man who was at the periphery of what God was doing now is at the core of what God was doing. Did you get that? Did you see those changing progressions? Why I am saying this is today, Pastor Tony, Apostle Arome, Chief Don, Apostle Dan, Odoma, different persons are the ones on, the, on this pulpit today. You get what I'm saying? But the moves of God is moving. What God is doing is also progressing. That someone who is seated in the congregation today, uh, the next time you're going to find that uh, under the spotlight of what God is doing, then you begin to discover you have become the center and the traction point of divine working. And it is what has been worked into you while you are where you are right now that is going to determine what is going to be worked out of you and by you when you come under the spotlight of the purpose of God, of the counsel of God, and of the prophecies of God. So that once upon a time, Apostle Aramel was an usher in a church. And last year, we had a living testimony of his pastor coming on ground here to tell us that he knew that this man was going somewhere. At that time, under the circumstance, the pastor was the one on the stage. Apostle was the one on the floor. The pastor has not gone wrong. But the branching out of what God is doing, the moves of God, the purposes of God is being wheeled to different people, different places, and to different generation, that there are things that God would not do in the generation of certain ministers that he would now do in a particular generation. And there are things he will not do in our generation that if Jesus Christ tarries, he's going to do in the generation of our children. God came to Samuel and said, I will do a work in your day in which all the ears that hear will there is something God is doing in the day of Eli's priesthood. And there is something God will be doing in the days of Samuel's priesthood. And mind you, at the time, Eli was so accurate that he hosted and housed the move of God. And God assigned Samuel to that house. But what is going on is progressing. Sometimes people turn wrong. Sometimes they turn right. Sometimes people go from glory to glory to glory. Other times people move from glory to dishonor. All right? These are all routings in the progression of the core. But a time came where all the happenings around in Israel before Eli could, he was the one that could order the movement of the ark of God. He could decide, okay, let's move the ark and take it to battle. Now, Samuel, who was at the periphery of what God was doing, is now at the center of what God is doing. And the private 
personal administration of the moves of God, of the workings of God in your own life will determine whether the move of God, the workings of God, the program of God that has been willed to you will be defeated in your day or whether it will be enlarged in your day. I had a dream in which God was teaching me, gave me a topic. And it was a teaching in the dream. And the topic of that teaching was running or ruining. That was last week. Whether you will run, you know, you know the meaning of, they say you run a company, you run a business, you run a school, you run stuff, right? Okay. He's talking about effective and efficient operation of an entity. And he say running or ruining. That a man can run something right or he can ruin that same thing. And whether you are going to run the purposes of God, the way God designed it, or it is going to be ruined in your hand or by your hand, is all dependent on what you are doing in this seeming state of passivity or inactivity. It is not expected that the action and activity going on should be limited to the pulpit. That while the minister, the pastors, the leaders are engaging the activities of their own destinies which revolves around the ministry of the word and prayer, there is something that those who are listening should also be doing. There's an activity, a, 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 a complementing activity of the pew to make destiny happen with the pew. If I may use that word. Did you get that? That what you have today different regimes Different generations of men who get to be able to stand before the people, but those things change. Sometimes there is a change, other times there is a progression. Okay? So that uh, we have some pastors who were on ground here at the time, they, but they've been posted out to different locations, different outposts. That what is going to come out of their callings, out of their ministry, is not dependent on the place they go to. It's dependent on what they are carrying to those places. And when the scattering begin to take place, you know, I think it was last year I was preaching, and under the anointing, I began to prophesy. And I, because I saw in the spirit, there's a church member that ordinarily I would have, someone here that I ordinarily the pastoral part we want to keep. But my mouth uttered. I say, there is someone here, I see that, uh, even though you are in Makot here, your place is in Liverpool. I don't know if anybody remember that time when I spoke about Liverpool right from this place. I gave a prophecy about Liverpool, spoke about it. I didn't know that it was my assistant resident pastor that I was prophesying out of. <laughs> hey! And when Reverend George left, left Makodi to to Europe, to UK, I thought he was going to Manchester originally and eventually wanting, wanting, story, story there, they landed in Liverpool. And when I spoke with him, uh, maybe about two weeks ago or so, we were just talking and then I said, how, how Manchester now, how Manchester United and the rest? He said, ah, Liverpool in the... I said, ah, you are the one that entered into the prophecy I gave. There are many of you listening that the, the schedule of your sitting is measured. How long you are going to remain seated and doing what you are, this, if I even sit as if you are in a beer palo, hmm. it will tell on where you are going to. Hello? Have you seen a lady that in the family, they have cooks, they have cleaners. They have everything. And then when they do like this, they remove the right leg of their shoes. They are back from school. They remove the left leg. They raise their hand. They help them to take off their shirts. And then the lady is beautiful and has all the, you know, all the attendant desirables. Beauty has now earned this lady a husband. 
Eh? And then training is what is required to keep her in that place in peace. When the man discovers she just can't cook, when they are cooking and they put salt, it is until their ancestors say the salt is okay, they will not stop. But when you test, the, the salt will just, it will just connect to your spinal cord straight. And the man will want to be an organized man, a nice brother. Hey, just wait. And just discover that this is what he is meant to live with. And it's not because anything is wrong with the lady as a person. What is wrong is with training, attendance, and attention when destiny is being prepared for. And there are many things that look like help now that are not help. Praise the Lord. You need to become sensitive to what God will be doing in your life. Praise the Lord. There are postures to take. And um, I want to, I don't, I'm not intending to terrorize you with tonight's meeting, but I still don't want you to miss the gravity of what um, I perceive the Lord will have me to bring to us. Second Kings chapter 5. At least you get the story up to this point where Elijah showed up on the scene. All right? Okay. And um, the Elijah showed up on the scene. And the next person we find within that ecosystem, long story cut short, is Elisha, right? Now, there is a way that Elijah had administered Elisha's sonship. There is a way Elijah handled, El Elijah handled Elisha with iron hand such that the day Elijah was going to be taken away, the man left Elisha to his sensitivity. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. That Elisha was left to his discernment. And if he was not up to date with the dealings of God in his life under the apostolic leadership that God has placed over him, he would just wake up one day and join the EFCC and police to be looking for Elijah because we saw him three days ago. We don't know where he went. And then it's now three years since we saw him. But Elijah gave Elisha such hard training that everything Elisha need to know, he had to know it by his own sensitivity. I'm told the old, the old preachers the fathers, whenever they want to carry their disciples out for crusade, for meetings, they just come when they have prayed, prayed through, and then um, after praying through, they receive direction for where God is leading them. They write it on a piece of paper, and they come to, they call the meeting, and then write the thing, and then cover it like this. Say, so, okay, everybody, the Lord is leading us to go and hold crusade. Pray now, and tell us where God is leading us to. Are you there? The people just begin to do shaka shaka shaka. You just remember one Nigerian film. Where they make sure you see a langwa. They, ah, that is where God is leading. And at the end of the day, that training brings men and women to such degree of accuracy where several of them, most of them get to get what is written word for word. Others get to receive what is written. It may not be word for word, but you will know that they had a sense of what is happening. They know that it is where Christianity first entered into Benue State or into Nigeria, but they may not know that it is in this place. They may not know, but they have a sense of what it is. And with those dealings, men's accuracy becomes heightened. And with that, Anytime such men say, I see, we can depend on them. 
When they say God spoke to me, we can rely on them. But when men have not gone through the dealings to impart the strength of accuracy and they want to lead us, they begin to lead us by the ancestral packages they received. Familiar people begin to come in and it's also contributing to the kind of church we have right now. So Elisha, Elisha went through dealings under Elijah. And after that moment, by the time you get to 2 Kings chapter 5, you now have another individual standing in the same place that Elisha stood before Elijah. Destiny matters are serious matters. The ground whereon you are standing is a holy ground. There are many things you cannot bring there. The same place where Elisha stood before Elijah and then he developed sensitivities, developed accuracies, developed loyalty. He took theologians have it that, that from when Elijah casted his mantle on Elisha, okay, and Elisha was into agriculture. Elisha was fulfilling the alternative destiny that God placed on his life. He was meant to be a prophet, but what he found to do and was prospering with, with the destiny God placed on his life was agriculture. He was a farmer. And when God, um, when the time came, God separated Elijah, Elisha from the alternative destiny he was running on and brought him into his prophetic destiny. And when I say prophetic destiny, I'm not talking about being a prophet essentially, but coming into God's design for your life. That is the prophetic side of the prophetic destiny I'm talking about. What God preplanned. Now, Elisha was being weaned from the natural side of his life into the prophetic side of his life. And remember, I think last week, Monday, Tuesday, we spoke about putting on the the the, the the physical side of the prophetic destiny, you remember? Now, this is Elisha. From the time Elisha joined to Elijah, theologians have it that it took like 20 to 21 years. So when Elijah met Elisha, Elijah was not about to die. There was enough time available for Elisha to pick all that he needed to pick for him to step into the room. Because by the time Elisha was gone and the sons of the prophets were giving interpretation to what was happening around the life of Elisha, they say Elisha stood in the room of Elijah. Now, Gehazi is now standing in the room that Elisha stood. Did you get the story up to that moment? Alright, you get it? So that there were things Elijah discovered about the office that Elijah stood, worked in that made Elijah, Elisha to keep focus for 20, 21 years. One of it is a spiritual paraphernalia of the calling. My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen Thereof, by a prophet, God brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. The tool for preservation, for actualization, was in the custody of the office that Elijah occupied. Now, having served accurately with a right hand, Elisha is now standing in that place. And Gehazi didn't know what he has been invited into. That the perpetuation, the posterity of what God is doing in the land of Israel is now going to be resting on the next generation. And here was Gehazi standing. And the lesson learned and lesson on land had transformation allowed and transformations not allowed is going to be now telling on the environment that is generated by the activities around the calling. 
because Elisha is now in custody of all the tools of what God is doing through the nation of Israel at the time, okay, problems will be coming. You get it? Challenges will be coming. Prosperities will be coming. Many things, it's, it's, a, it's an it's a traction point for many activities, both supernatural and natural activities. And Eli Gehazi found himself in the midst of what was going on. And that is what brought us to 2 Kings chapter 5 from verse 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable. Because by him, the Lord... Can you see that? By him, God is walking among different nations. You get me? And here there is a posturing that... I don't know what made uh, Naaman to become attractive to the Lord in a way, but you're going to see the follow-up activities of the Lord concerning the life of Naaman. All right? It, by him, the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in Velo, but he was leprous. One of the things you're going to find, and uh, it, there are also uh, things that you need to come to terms with in humility is the fact that around your life, around the life of men and women, you're going to find things like position. You see a position there? He was a great man with his master. It means as far as the king of Syria is concerned, there is a position that Naaman had to stand. And even though he could stand before the king, he was standing not without a problem. This position of being a great man also made him an honorable man. Have you heard of honorables in Nigeria? The honorables, they, they have their benchmark um, insignias that you find with them. They drive the, the cars that you climb. There are cars you enter, there are cars you climb. I hope, do you know the difference? You have the entry motto. You don't... <laughs> There are, there are cars you climb into and then there are those that you enter. <laughs> when you see honorables, what happens with their life is they climb their cars. They don't enter their cars. You don't get into the car, you climb into the car. <laughs> when you find an honorable man, honorable man, watch what I want you to pick about this man now. Number one, he had the standing before the king. He was a great man. The king acknowledged he was a great man and by him, Deliverances had come. Have you, if you want to understand what I'm talking about, um, when Nigeria played with uh, Ivory Coast, the finals, there is one of the players that was being celebrated, the goalkeeper. Even though Nigeria lost the match, he saved two goals. All right? And by that, he earned himself a name. The River State government gave him a state welcome, gave him lands, gave him stuff. The match is over, but his prosperity, his money is growing like grass. You get what I'm talking about? Because of accomplishment, this man had earned a name and a fame. He was an honorable man. And when you find honorable people, one of the things they have is they have possessions. Can you say possessions? You find this man that has a position before the king, but when you meet him away from the king, he has stuff. He had houses, he had cars, he had everything you could imagine. He was an honorable man because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor. He had accomplished feats, great things, but there is something lacking in the life of the man. When you see him, he was leprous. Are you there? Somebody called me and said, um, man of God, did, 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 did. I came all the way from so, so, so place. I want to see, I want to see apostle. Help me see him and you will not regret it. And I said, oh, you have spoiled the problem. <laughs> you have spoiled everything. You have spoiled it. By reason of the kind of sonship I have had, 
that kind of statement is an offense to the office of my sonship. I should help you. You should see apostle if he is available. All right? If his schedule can accommodate him, you will see him. Sometimes when you are not able to see him, it's not because we didn't want you to see him and all of that. The man himself, his body, sometimes when you look at him, you know that this one needs rest. But to say that you will not regret it because you, you came from somewhere, you already, you already spoiled the matter. And if in priority, you may likely be at the last wrong. What am I saying? When you come around a spiritual environment where God is working and men are coming and going, if you have not taken your sitting down position, sit posture serious, you're going to fall before the things you will see. He was a mighty man of valor. When you hear but, just know that every other thing on this side is already cancelled by this one thing here. Every other thing. And in the life and to the mind of Naaman, you can take all that he had if you can remove this leprosy from him. Are you there? Are you there? I don't intend to spoil your day. But we can make the matters of destiny less intense than they truly are. This is what, if Christians don't have in mind already, you get into certain quarters and you see money, you will faint. You will first of all faint. You will just collapse first. Then when they use the, the smell of the money to resuscitate you, then you, you begin to think about your ancestors. All the sufferings they went through. They were riding bicycle. <laughs> I'm just struggling. Then I struggle until I climb the mountain. Then you remember. Then you say, ah, if you didn't get born again to suffer again, you are gone. If your training was not accurate, you are gone. Heaven will not reap benefit by your life. You are seated here today, but Life will happen that you will be standing elsewhere outside of church. And it is what you have become that you will put on display. Do you get what I'm talking about? There is something that will be happening here that if you are discerning, you will already know the direct application of what is being said there to your own unique context. Amen. Go to verse. He was a leper. But when you hear but, it means you need to pay attention to what is coming after. Hallelujah. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid and she waited on Naaman's wife. All right? Are you seeing that? How many persons do we have right now? Go back. Go to verse 1. In verse 1, we have someone there. Everything above verse 1 is Naaman. Verse 2 is all that had, the Syrians have done and an unnamed person. But she was a little maid who while she was in Israel was paying attention to the things happening in Israel. It may look as if they don't really matter but she was paying attention. All right? And this lady now had a posting. Can you say position? Can you say possession? Can you say posting? Have you been posted through NYC before? They posted me to Niger. They post this lady's posting is to stand before the wife of this man that had all the positives being cancelled out by one negative. Are you there? Neman had many positives in his life. That were being cancelled out by one negative that was also in his life. And this lady now had a position to stand 
before the wife of this man about whom many things were told us in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Did you get that? Right? You can actually put yourself in this picture. Okay? All right? The leprous, then the maid. Okay? One thing about leprosy and the story about Naaman is there is a, 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 there, is a, a there are certain life um, platforms you're going to find yourself that your outward accomplishment will overshadow your inner reality. Okay? That who this person is, what the person is doing is great. Then when we begin to touch who the person is, then we discover he is not great in his reality, but what he is capable of doing is great. And then here we find the young, the little maid who was there as well. All right. Okay, verse 3, please. Verse 3. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, we are with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. See, I, I, if this lady see past, if this man, if he just see past Tony. Now, one other thing here is, as you take your calling and your destiny serious, there are things that people take note about you that they don't tell you. When you are hardworking, you are committed, integrity, you are sincere. You think you're just being sincere. <laughs> People are taking note. There are things that are being said about you that are not being said to you. While in Israel, this lady may not have had the privilege of meeting Elisha one-on-one. -on -one, but she's taking note of everything that happened the seriousness, the diligence, the commitment of Elisha to his calling, to his ministry and everything, the lady took note of it. And one went in and told his, this is actually Naaman, went in and told his Lord saying, thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. Verse 5. And the king of Syria said, go to, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six hundred pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. Who is coming with all of this? The leprous man. The king said, go, I'm going to send a letter. The king of Syria was prospering in warfare, let's say like America. They say, ah, um, which, go, which president of a country I would go to use? Tinimbu, Tinimbu. <laughs> um, uh, we heard that uh, this and that, uh, there's uranium in Niger and uh, we, we need you to get involved and uh, see what ECOWAS can do about it. See you later. In fact, by the time you are done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This was a king that sent a letter. Say, make sure um, I'm sending one of my lieutenants to you. He had leprosy, please. Um, you have um, you have talents of gold, silver, and everything, please. Make sure he's healed and send him back on his way. Uh, he has other assignments to carry out for me. And then when the, the, the matter, the, 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 the errand was sent, go to verse 6 and see now. Go to verse 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, Behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. This is the king of Israel. And what the lady said was the prophet in Israel. There is a level where men get to that you need to be humble to relate with God's solution. Because he was king and he's going to deal with matters in another nation, he felt he needed to transact through under king. He doesn't have time. This prophet, whatever, where were the prophets when I took over? When we read it, so what is that? Please make sure. He said, make sure. Go back to that verse 6 again. Let's see. He said, um, I have there we sent my, uh, Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of the leprosy. No courtesy. He has come. Please heal him. Sent through the hand of the bearer, the son of 50 billion naira. Thank you. In fact, no thank you. Kindly send through this account details, 50 billion dollars. That's all. Verse 7. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his cloth and said, 
am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. What he is considering as a quarrel is the answer that another man has in his calling. What this man is helpless about is what is in the calling of another person. All right? Which verse are we now? Okay, and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? This, is a, this man, uh, he rent his clothes twice. Okay, in the next, in chapter 7, he, he rent his clothes. When those women were eating their children, he said, God do so to me. If Elisha's head is still on his neck by this time tomorrow and all of that. The man is fond of tearing his clothes. <laughs> When men are helpless, they tear their clothes. <laughs> Amen. Let, the, let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. If you are not sure of being in custody of the solution that is being sought internationally, this is a bilateral um, transaction now. Okay, this is international transaction. It's not something local. Okay? If this man was not sure, he will not say, send him to me. That he has mastered the details of his calling, the protocols, the ritual of his calling, that he knows that this thing is there here. That he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. Can you say prophesy? <laughs> uh, so Naaman came with his horses and with his... Can you see that? He came... With his position, he came with his possession. But he also came with his what? With his problems. And stood at the door of the house of Elisha. You know, Jesus Christ said, the son of man, uh, foxes have holes, birds of the air have net, nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. All right? Uh, even though when uh, those two disciples from John went to visit in the state within the next day and all of that, uh, Elisha had, had the house. Amen. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him. I think I should speak to, because one of the things the Lord told me is he's going to give increase to callings. All right? Paul plants, Apollo waters, but God is going to give increase. Trying to be relevant to how will I say that they will not misunderstand me? God sees people from the standpoint of the destinies he has placed over their lives. Anything that the man has become in his flesh, all right, trying to be relevant to the things men have attained naturally is the way to the dung hill of ministry and destiny and the calling. Let me say it again. Seeking for relevance with people who don't have relevance with God is the easiest way out of God's program for your life. This is a national figure coming to see Neman. And what people normally would see externally is who is coming and what he was coming with. That kind of sights and sounds is, it only flows from men who have not been raised before God and under a strong fathering spirit. The flattering spirit will make you to see what God is not seeing in the life of men. When a beautiful lady comes to church, what you get to see is, is the beauty of her face, not the brilliance of her destiny. Oga, 
something is wrong with your sight. Get dark Sani Abacha goggles. Black one that will give you only black and white. You don't see the colors. When you only see the cars, the houses, their carriage and all that they come with, you are seen wrongly. If an international personality, a national figure for another nation is coming to your church, coming to where you are at and leading, and God said, I don't want to see that person. Will you have the courage not to go? You know, Balaam suffered the same thing. When the king of Moab sent the senators, the who is who of Moab, to Balaam, but they had, they wanted to get the, the assistance and the commitment of the prophetic to prosecute a program and a project against the people of God. You see the kind of warfare that Balaam went through. After the first time, he sent higher officers again. And they came with more substances. And this time, he couldn't stay in the house. He was on his way. See, as I was, he was going. And God had to, you know, accost him in transit with the intention of killing him. See what Elisha did. All that Elisha did is because of the kind of handling he had with Elijah. Many times, if you don't develop sensitivities to the details of the calling, you will misinterpret divine dealings for denier. There are things God will not want you to have access to. Do you know that Apostle Aramay had to officially tell me that anything that I'm giving to as a pastor in this place that I should not tell him? He said, if, even if you are given one billion, I don't want to know. And I say, you may not want to know, but I need you to know for my own safety. Are you there? Hmm. There are certain things I will only tell people that have allowed me to tell them things the way it is in my heart. We were, we had a, a leader in Arsia at the time when Apostle was in Lagos. When I'm, people give me stuff, I tell him, this, that woman there gave me this wrapper. He said, go and sew. This one, this suit, somebody gave me. Because early I learned that when you take something from a man that God has not accepted, you are going to cut problems with God. When a man who is having problems with God is giving you stuff, you are on your way out of everything God is doing. So we learn to say no a thousand times before we began to experiment with saying yes. Elisha sent a messenger unto him saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times and thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shall be clean. The reason is you are dirty. The man has position. He has position but he is filthy. And when people come to church, don't forget how you come. You may come with your status. You may come with your educational attainment. You may come with the, the rank in your family. You are from a royal family. And all your father is a governor, the first senator of Benin State. Your, 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 your dad was a senator of the first republic and all of that. When you come, we know that you came with positions and possessions. But what are the problems you came with? You need the Jordan. And there is a need for deeping. He didn't say deep three times. There are many persons who are in places that they are, they are dipping is not cleaning them. 
but their hearts and minds are being pacified that they are going to church, but church is not entering into them. The goal of this dip is when you dip seven times, you will come, your, your flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shall be clean. Are you there? Are you getting what I'm saying? I had a friend of mine doing great with a ministry, just expanding his life. He told me, he said he went to a church for four months consecutively, Sunday in, Sunday out, week, midweek service, after midweek service, for four months before he responded to altar call. He knew the problem he came to church with. He was trying to see if, if I stay here and dip for three years, if I dip for seven years, whether I'm going to come out clean. And his name was Naaman. And his name was Naaman. And he dip, and he dip, and he dip, and dip, and dip, and dip, and dip. And he came out whole. Oh, that is a song our children sing. When you go to church, you come around places of worship, spiritual environment. One of the things that makes you sensitive is your dipping. And the kind of water you dip. There are certain waters that are already filthy and dirty. He said, go and dip seven times and thou shalt come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. Look at what happened. Verse, I don't want to go about the implications of what if he dipped five times? What if he dipped only three times? What if he dipped only two or six times? Because many times when people are called to churches to come and dip, they don't dip long enough. Dip to receive your healing. Dip to receive prosperity. Dip for your destiny to open up. You are there for six months. Ah, this church is not happening like the one I saw on YouTube. Then you, you left where you were dipping. But Naaman was wrought and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out. We will not come out. Don't come out to what God has not come out to. In the book of Acts chapter 4, when the apostles had prayed, one of the things that happened was that the place was shaking. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were filled with boldness. What is on ground required this additional touch of boldness. And by reason of that, the caliber of those that became obedient to the faith were at the level of priests. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the bishops and all the shops were the ones who were becoming born again because of a move of what the apostles were coming with. Right where you are, there is something that you can take there. And behold, I thought, I, I, behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leprous. Preconceived ideas. If it is not Pastor Tony, somebody in Hi. But whenever you preach, I'm always blessed. You are lying. There is a pride from where you are speaking from. God, who at sundry times has spoken through the mouth of the prophets, has in this last day spoken through us through his son. God has been speaking. And I said, whether through Isaiah. Or through Apostle Paul. Anybody that says God did not speak to Apostle Paul is lying. God has been speaking progressively. When the son came on the scene, he spoke through the son. And there have been men and women that he has been speaking through. I thought he was just going to do like this. If you know that it is by the wave of the hand, why didn't you get someone in Syria to wave hand and get you healed? So you find position possession, and all of this combined together produce pride and arrogance. And there's a lot of arrogance in church. 
And pastors pamper arrogance. We don't want to offend nobody because the person is a professor, the person is an ambassador, is a this, is a that. What's your value? What's the value of what you have attained physically with heaven? Because we must now evaluate what is happening around our lives from the standpoint of eternity and what God is doing. And you see, I thought he's going to stand and then he will strike his hand. He will strike his hand on the place. And then when he strikes, when he does all that I have in my heart, that is when I'm going to be healed. Many persons who have not been healed in churches is because they, it's not because there's no healing anointing. It's because of the barriers. I, 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 I was hoping that he would just call my case. He would just call my name. There's a woman here. Your name is Ivery. Please, would you please come out? This is what you are going through. Am I lying? Yeah, no matter you're not lying. The executive delivery of healing. It won't happen. Every, every man must assess what God is doing by faith. And faith is the great equalizer. And everything that arises from faith is what God is powering. Underneath is men, above it is God. Verse 12. Are not Abana and Papha rivers of Damascus better than all the rivers of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Many persons have gotten angry from church because of the simplicity of God's solution. Hey! There is only River Jordan in Israel. Just imagine, in fact, it's even brown. Whereas we have a banner and puffer. We have medicine. We have science. We have technology. We have everything. May I not dip in them and be healed? And you know what? He turned and raged on. Look at what happened. Now, the, when you are in church, pray for these kind of voices around. Servants. Who will look at your status and humbly submit your deliverance in suggestion. And his servants came near. I don't know why they were afar off. Maybe because of the leprosy or whatever or because of his status. Alright? There are many things that made them to stand afar off. Either because of his status, the whole paraphernalia and everything, or because of the leprosy. Is that okay? They came near and spoke unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, bring 10 billion, it serves your status to do it. So I say, ah, I paid. I paid the price for my healing. I paid. So if he says you should do some great things, wouldn't you, would has done not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, wash and be clean. It looked like they have always known that he was a dirty man. Can I say this in church? Can I say this? There are many ugly things around our lives that are being shrouded by some good things. There are those who come near, know, and they wish it was the good things minus the ugly things. But one of the things I discovered is people don't want to offend people. So everybody is pretending to be nice. Yeah, hey, bless you, bless you. My brother, this is your hairstyle. Now, is it 360, whatever you... Where did you have this record? My brother, my God, my God. <laughs> the real thing they want to say is not what they have said. And I'm talking about fact, real factual realities. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not talking about traditional, uh, how, can, uh, how can women be preaching? That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about factual realities. And they say, you would have done it. Go and wash and be clean. Look at verse 14. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of the little child. And he was clean. Don't choose where you will dip. This is, by this March, I'll be 21 years having rededicated my life to Christ and almost ministering immediately. No, by April. And by this March, I'll be 17 years in this house. There are things I have noticed. Your deeper 
may most likely than not is not Apostle Arome. And for many more others, your deepers, they are not Pastor Tony and Chief. You can repackage rebellion. I sit down and I see when people come in, the usher is your deeper. And as they are coming in, they are doing it like this. They used to do like this. And you have already calculated that if I sit in this side, the angulation of the heat is going to, re <laughs> it's going to reformat my brain. The angulation of the air condition will reformat my brain from the heat of my body. So when they are doing like this, you are just doing like this. You are doing like this. You know what? You just chose River Abana. And you may think that the real thing that happened in church was a message for you. It wasn't the message. Because most times you don't even remember the message. But there is an experience that God wanted to use this usher who, if you check from up to toe, what they are wearing is 12,000 naira, including the shoe. Eh? And you are gorgeously cladded in gold and everything. God is going to use this usher just to remove something that you don't need now that you are in the house of God. You have, you have, you have tried by coming. Your coming is indication that destiny is calling you. But there is a posture you must take when you come to the place of destiny. And God will not use me. Because when I say, ah, why not sit here? I say, yeah, man, God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. And then you just escape what God wants to do in your life. Isaiah 54, in verse 4, he said, let them stretch the place, the curtain of your habitation, the tent, stretch it. Can you see that Elisha did not show up? He sent the servant. And the servant is the one that said, this is a spot where you are going, they, they are finished bathing, they are finished washing, they are finished everything, the water is brown. This is the spot where you are going to enter. And when, when a Naaman saw himself with his, the greatness, the feat he has accomplished and everything he is in Syria and all of that, he was angry. They advised him. But when he went, he went and did, carried out obedience to instructions that was given in simplicity. The end product was that his experience in church affected his person. There are believers who come to spiritual environment. Listen, Elisha was the embassy of the move of God at the time. Anywhere people gather plenty. They say, ah, it's Arsene. Oh, is this place? Oh, is this place? Just know that there are many people coming. They are Naaman's, but they are not aware. They have issues in their lives. And the way God will solve it, he will not get apostolic. to come and say, my sister, the Lord bless you. You came all the way from, um, uh, from a worry <laughs> with worries. And all of that. Just sit here. This is where the anointing used to flow very well. Sit here. You don't know the matching orders that the ushers have. All right? Maybe because of video coverage, you don't need people with flip-flops to be seated at the front. Sometimes in certain places, the reason why they say ladies should not sit at the front is not because women are so standard. Because sometimes you just sit and then you are high in spirit and <laughs> the man of God has been distracted. So in most churches, God allows churches to have cultures that will govern what is happening according to righteousness. Alright? And they say only men at the front. You get that? Alright? Okay? Then you say, why, 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 why? Hey, you are choosing River Papa. And in case they allow you to sit there, because by reason of strength and by reason of argument and they don't want to create a stir. God will not visit you. God can partner with everything but he will not partner with unrighteousness. He will not partner with rebellion. For instance, God can bless your camo queen, chloroquine and paracetamol 
to administer healing if that is what your faith can carry. But he will not bless Babalawo's work. Say, bring charm from Babalawo. Say, God, please, as I'm using this charm, let it work faster. God will not partner with unrighteousness. He will not partner with rebellion. The things you have become before you came to destiny are one of the greatest hindrances you're going to encounter. Elisha had to deal with his earthly attainment in the face of his prophetic destiny. He, had, he was into mechanized agriculture. He had 12 yokes of oxen. That is 24 tractors. You get what I'm saying? And for you to have a yoke of oxen to farm is not backyard farming we're talking about. And when the, the, the mantle of Elijah rested on Elisha, he knew that he needed to take on a new journey. And here is a man who had attained stuff in the world coming to meet Elisha. And Elisha knew that the problem this man is having is the problem I have dealt with. I'm not going to come and see you. Hey, is this a password, man? Hmm. The things we get when we receive calls. Somebody just goes, hello, who are you? You called me. Kindly tell me good afternoon. My name is Patrick Okonkwo. I'm calling from Portaco. Don't take, call me and begin to say, who are you? Is this a post man? Okay, if this is a post man, won't you be afraid of the way you even started the call? Hello? Out. I got the call today. Hello, I'm calling from Portacot, all the way from Portacot. You're welcome, sir. I want, to, I want to speak with Apostle Roman. Is this Apostle Roman? <laughs> I said, no, sir, he's one of his pastors. But I know they'll say, I, I need a higher anointing. I said, that's why we are here. Say, it's him I want to talk to. <laughs> say, the anointing of my, of my father, the prophetic and apostolic mantle of fire, the same that is at work on the life of my father, is on my life. What is the problem? Say, it's him. So I said, okay, um, currently he's not in the country and um, he'll be back sometime in April. I don't know why recently I said they're using sometime in April. You know, sometime in April is a movie? Some, sometime in April. And then when I hear that, you can manage your problem until he comes. And we can manage you while you manage your problem. Hallelujah. Be I enough for thou shalt Go back, to, go back to my second kings. Where yeah, I want to get to, I've not even gotten there. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. Now watch it. He didn't dip according to his own heart, the prescription of his heart. You know, he came with a prescription of what? Coming out, first of all, to acknowledge that I am this, then like this, then slap the place, then my own job is to become clean. They didn't come. He went and did according to divine prescription. When you come to the place of destiny of which you are, be sensitive to divine instruction. That is your connection to divine working. The things that God wants to do in your life is not apart from what God has said to you. Launch into the deep. Cast your net. Launch into the deep and then bring forth. And after all the discussion, I've toiled all night, we have tried this, we tried that. At the end of the day, something told him it won't hurt to try one more time. But he did according to. And the end product got Peter weeping. You don't know why he was crying. It's not just because of the fish. Many times when you see how you have delayed your own intervention, you will find people crying. You have always thought that ah, a woman cannot pray for me, for me to be healed. Then you have remained and languished in this sickness for six more months. Then a woman prayed for you and then you, dis you are, when people are crying, you need to know why they are crying. No. It's not just that the Holy Ghost is beating them. Check it. There are many more reasons. They know why they are crying. He dipped according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean. 
Verse 15, 16. The next verse, please. This man has got, he has become enraptured with my message and he has forgotten that he is on his own duty post. The man on the council, are you having difficulty? And he said, but he said, as, as the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, uh -uh. and he returned to the man of God and all his company and came and stood before him. You see, this time around, after fulfilling obedience, he could stand before the man of God. Until then, there is no standing. And he said, behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. This is Elisha's goal. And this is heaven's gain. To acknowledge that there is no other God, even the one in Syria, except what? In Israel, and this is his prophet. I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Take a blessing, I pray you. Verse 16. But he said, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Verse 17. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, body with earth, for thy servant will henceforth offer neither bond offering nor sacrifice unto the other gods, but unto the Lord. This is the end product of divine encounter. What he's saying is, as I'm living in Israel, please, I'm not asking for gold, I'm not asking for sheep, give me sand so I can go and build altar. And that is where I'm going to be worshipping. I'm not going to sacrifice unto other gods but the Lord. Verse 18. In this thing the Lord pardon thy servant that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon um, to worship there and he leaned on my hand and I bowed down myself in the house of Rimon when I bowed down myself in the house of Rimon the Lord pardon my servant in this thing it is like you are you're, you, you are serving with a governor and the governor is going to a mosque alright for whatever meeting and then you have to necessarily be there that is what this man is saying here you are serving with the president and he wants to visit the, the, one of these traditional rulers where they have to do a lot of uh, you know, genuflation and all of that. And then you also have to go cultural. This man is saying, in case I go with my Lord into the temple of Rimon, and because normally what happens is you need to lean on my shoulder. When you see me kneeling, don't take it to be worshipful. I am not actually worshipping that thing. And he, this man was bringing a career uh, challenge before God. So that God will know that he is really, 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 this, this salvation has touched this man's heart. Okay? He said, let my Lord pardon me in this thing. And he said unto him, go in peace. So he departed from him in a little way. And this is where uh, transformational leadership comes in. Where people in church may have to interact with people in the world. Okay? But that is not for today. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, this is where I'm going to. Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master spared Naaman, this Syrian, in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. You see, one of the things that as a believer, as a Christian, even as a child of your parents, one of the things you should trust God never to happen in your life is that your gift is rejected. When a father rejects your gift, it's, it's one of the greatest punishments you can ever have. When your biological father rejects your gift, if he does it righteously, he's pointing to the fact that you put your hand for something that he's not interested in. Because of that, all along, when people bring gift to Elisha and Elisha collects it, Gehazi used to see it as he caught this guy away. away. Because he said, because Elisha refused to take, you know what he said? He said he spared him. He's not understanding the acceptance of gifts as the acceptance of person. When God rejected 
Cain, he also rejected his gift. When God accepted Abel, he also accepted his gifts. And Gehazi is saying that Nem, um, um, Elisha's rejection of Naaman's gift was spare, he spared him. He didn't deal with Naaman. That is not ministry. Hallelujah. And in my practice of ministry, there's been many persons that God said, don't accept, don't collect anything from them. Oga, oh we know you. You are around. We know you're not earning salaries. You are now, suddenly you started driving a car of seven million. Don't bring your tight. We want to know what happened. How did you start earning that? How, how, if you are driving a car of 7 million, 3.5, 4.5, it means you have more than that. How did you earn the money? Your prophetic anointing is working, eh? Don't be so. The way I saw you, I see it is your prophetic grace that is working. Five years, three years, five years down the line, and you don't see them. Is because they are touching their abominables. Prophetic word. Then bam. You blow. Please don't blow. Grow. I grew up in a church where people pay tithes in tithe cards. When they bring it, we know that ah, your salary don't move from 38,000 to 50,000. We know. The day you bring a tithe of 1 million, you need to explain what happened. It's not breakthrough until we know how you got it. Hallelujah. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master spared me, man, this Syrian, this Syrian, in not receiving at his hands that which he brought, but as the Lord liveth. Hey. Elisha said, As the Lord liveth, I will not take from you. And Gehazi said, As the Lord liveth, but as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take some word from him. There are many things you can do in the name of the Lord that liveth. And one of the things you need to understand, if you have not developed inner capacity, you will not be able to withstand certain kind of environments of temptations. Low integrity, low purity, low loyalty cannot resist High temptation. Those days when we on campus, we give we, people give testimony when they go to university. On Sunday, ah, I just want to thank God. Uh, you know, I went to BSU, I went to University of Jos for four years. The Lord helped me. Uh, you know, I didn't do this, I didn't. You know, one of the things I discover, people testify about the temptation that was not temptation at all. Are you getting it? That lady that you didn't like was the one that was tempting you. The one that you like, that didn't even tempt you and you even fell. You didn't talk about that one. As the Lord live it, I will run after him and take some word. Verse 21. So Gehazi followed after Naaman and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet. Can you see the, the man that was expecting the prophet to come out is now disembarking from his highlander to meet the servant. And said, it's all well. The next verse. And he said, all is well. You see, there are two times in scripture where I remember that they say, all is well. And in those two instances, all was not well. The all is well. My master had sent me saying, can you see, now greed is leading to lies. And I can tell you the place of destiny will put such pressure on you. Hmm. 
Should I talk? Should I talk? Christ, help me. You see, as a pastor, you're going to discover that other people's wives are beautiful. As a married man, you're going to discover that your wife is not the most beautiful. And life is going to bring you to that environment of stark realization. Have you wondered what was going on in the life of Gehazi at this time? This is Elisha. That when somebody is in his house in another country, what they are discussing, the prophet picks it. What kind of demonic persuasion and conviction went on to make him believe that this lies he's telling against Elisha? Elisha will not know. It, there was a great move of darkness at work and you will face it if you are going to fulfill calling. You will have needs looking at you koro koro and there is no way out. And God is watching to see whether you are going to take your reward from men or whether you are going to wait for him to reward you. Because God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Part of that diligently seeking is to wait until he comes. Young, handsome man. Have you seen beautiful ladies in ministry? Yes. God has beautiful daughters. And the environment of all of this is going to put pressure on an aspect of your life. And while you are seated there, before you flip, either come up stage here or go on the stage of your own destiny, please and please and please deal with these matters. Yes, back, I went to the, 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 because of my printing engagement, I had partners. And one of my partners had a, a, a cashier, very dark, eager lady. Every time I go to the place and I do what I'm supposed to do there, you know, I, I get to pay her. And I discovered, uh, why am I, and, uh, you know, when you're going to pay maybe 20,000, you give 5,000 first, then you, under 5,000, just be, to maintain engagement. I didn't know something was happening until one of those days I went there, I didn't see the lady and I felt an emptiness in my heart. What is this? The next day I went, I said, Syntex, ah, where are your cashier now? I said, ah, cashier, no day. What happened there was not all that I said. I discovered, why was I missing this cashier? And all that has been going on is just payment. I came and told my wife, that there's a lady that this is what happened. I don't know why I was just missing the lady and thinking about her. This lady, I don't even know her name. But something was developing because of the environment of work. And destiny creates its own atmosphere. And whether you are going to survive it or not, it's not going to be determined and dependent on your color, your height, or your gender. It is going to be determined by what you have walked into you. And because God wants to depend and trust me, I will go through. Even at this phase, I'm fulfilling a destiny but also passing a test for another, a, another phase of destiny within the same lifetime. That it will take you becoming sensitive in the calling to move from 30 fold to 60 fold to 100 fold. Then on the last day you say, I am more than a conqueror. I have fought a good fight. I have kept the run the race. I have kept the faith. What is remaining is God's part. There is a reward. There is a crown. And God is the one owing me now. I am not owing God. There are fights you must fight. You must fight against your own corruption. 
Many times as you are in transit, you're going to find yourself making many mistakes. Peter was writing. He said, if you are punished for your own sin, you are punished for your own disobedience, then take it. But if you are punished for righteousness, for doing what is right, God is happy about it. And I discovered many times, there are many things you are going to suffer because of you. Not because of God. During the IEC, I had to interact with several of our international guests. And there were some who somehow came close, like really close, females. I made up my mind I was not going to be with any of them if my wife was not there. It's not because I'm afraid, of, afraid to fall. But the scripture says, make provision for things honest in the sight of all men. Number one. And you don't need to tempt the devil to tempt you. You get what I'm saying? Because the environment of ministry, destiny, calling, career, uh, you work in a bank. Have you not seen ladies who are beautiful? In fact, they are carriage. You even, you, you, something happens to you, you, you just feel like, like something. What that is calling for is for a fight. And this fight is because of my destiny. And I'm not going to say, ah, the way I felt, oh, it's just because I'm a man. It's not because you are human. It's because a devil is on your case. Look at what Eli, uh, Eli, uh, uh, Gehazi did. Told lies against his father in the Lord. Say, my master had sent me. Give me, give them my prayer. He said, oh, Mama, behold, even now they, are, they, they have come from, from me uh, to me from Mount Ephraim to young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of raiment. The, 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 this, this, this prescription is given is based on what he saw that the man came with. And what? And he said, go to, go to the next verse, please. And Neman said, be content. I actually wanted to give more than you are asking for. It means, you know, the unbeliever may even think that you are humble. They came with 10 million, you are asking for 500,000. That pens the church in the light. Ah, the church is not expensive. If it was hospital, they would have taken 20 million. But the man is out of order and out of sync with God. Be, be, be content. Take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. When a younger minister, a younger son of the prophet sees Gehazi marching back home and two men are carrying the spoils of ministry, the spoils of career, the spoils from, from his office, they load the boot, the trunk with dollars and with naira means. When people see that, they will think that God has blessed him. Be careful of who you call the blessed of the Lord. Stole monies that is for the, for, for the community. There are projects that are done in this land that before the project are handed over, the project is dilapidated. And nobody says nothing. And they go to churches and they call them the blessed of the Lord. Somebody is even saying, I, I, I am the pastor of the commissioner. What is that person doing out there? When you see Gehazi coming back with the spoils of rebellion, the spoils of greed, he was receiving the reward, the prize for his calling. That is the exchange for what God has chosen him for. Because when God brought Elisha close to Elijah, it was for exchange and transfer. When God brought Gehazi into that same room, it was for exchange and transfer. Elisha had double portion. What measure was Gehazi supposed to carry? Do you know the weight of what you are losing because you are not paying attention to the gravity of what God is calling us to? Deep sensitivity. I don't know what this will cost the kingdom, but I will not give it up. Job said, till I die. Till I die. 
I will not put my integrity away from me. How much is the cost of integrity in pseudo P supermarket? Nothing. There is no calculator where they will punch and give you the weight of your integrity in cash. But in kingdom measures, it's either great losses or great gains with the man that carry. Urge him. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house and he let the men go and they departed. Verse 25. But he went in and stood before his master, but not in the same shape, not in the same condition. He left the presence of his master accepted of God. He came back rejected, a reprobate man that God cannot work with. And you are going to see the emotion and the mood of God expressed to Elisha in the things Elisha said to Gehazi. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no with her. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? The leprosy thereof of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. In the realm of the spirit, this infraction in the place of destiny, the punishment could not be borne by one man nor one generation. It will take a forever for it to run its full errand. And if this man say forever, it's forever. That we may be encountering sons and descendants of Gehazi in Louisiana, in Philadelphia, wherever it is, you may come around the son of Gehazi. And they have problems and issues that are looking as if they cannot be solved. But when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be removed. In Christ. There are many things that our ancestors and our parents have done that the punishment is overflowing. That It will take Christ to be your refuge and your hiding place. What is that thing that happened in a moment whose weight in the realm of the spirit, whose lease and tenancy is forever? When we come to the place of calling, the place of destiny, the things that happen on those grounds, they are not in ordinary measures. They are not in normal measures. That is why one man can die for the whole of humanity. That as by one man sin came into the world, by one man righteousness, life can come. That is, these are things that happen on the ground of the call. And tonight, it is my intention to make you heavy to have weight, a baptism of gravity in your spirit man and in the realm of the spirit over your life. Would you please rise up tonight and begin to talk to the Lord? The reason why the landscape of the church currently is debatable. We are wondering whether the church uh, is relevant or not. We are wondering whether the church has any use or value or not. It's because of the gradual progressive loss of gravity in kingdom matters. Can you pray and say, Lord, <laughs> baptize me. Lord, baptize me with a sense of gravity of holy things. Lord, awaken my sensitivity as I tread on the ground of the calling. Go ahead and pray. 
Yes. Kambo kafe sambre. Gamino ndenzese. When I look at Timothy today, I see that Timothy is standing on the same place I am standing right now. Timothy was a believer in a church within a region until Apostle Paul came up and showed up and adopted him. There was a divine adoption. And I was a believer with a good report in the church until I had divine adoption by my father. I'm standing on the same ground and I want to run the destiny and the calling. I don't want to ruin it. Can you pray and say, Lord, help me. Everything I must be, everything I must become to fit into my destiny, into my calling, in the strength and in the power that God has drawn out. Oh God, don't spare me. Lord, don't spare me. Lord, don't spare me. Joshua was standing on the same ground and Elisha stood years after. And Joshua was committed. Every time Moses was on the mountain to seek the face of God, Joshua was at the foot of the same mountain. I don't know what he's seeking, but he went through the same experience. And when the time came and Moses has gone, God came to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant is dead. Rise up now and go over this Jordan, for you shall divide the inheritance. God went after the man who has gone through God's process, through God's program. When you read the book of Proverbs, you are going to see the labors, the labors of David to deliver Solomon from the big force that himself fell into. Oh my God! In the book of Proverbs is David's discipleship manual for Solomon. And Solomon said, "I was my, I, I was when I was my uh, young, I was my father's son, tender and only beloved before my mother. He taught me also, saying." Wisdom is the principal thing. So get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. And David warned Solomon so much about strange men, about strange women, just to deliver him from the pitfalls that himself David fell into. Oh my God. I don't know what you have seen in yourself. What are the things that you have propensity to fall for? What are the things that you know you don't have the capacity to withstand yet? And you need to make it a divine project between you and God. Someone need to pray right now and become sincere and become open before God. Even Naaman spoke to Elisha on the spot and told Elisha, there are things I cannot escape. I must enter the temple of Rimon. I must do this. Spare me. Pardon me in this. Someone need to ask the Lord. Ask the Lord, everything and anything that will defeat any aspect of your program for my life right now, I ask you, hide my sensitivity to those matters. Hey! Lord, make me practical instrument for you. Use me, oh Lord. Lord, a practical instrument for you. Use me, oh Lord. Oh Lord, make me. Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Oh Lord, use, use me, me, oh Lord. Oh, Make me, make me.